a new day dawns at Wadi El Hetan. Massive skeletal remains lie silent. A testament to eons of change in this dry, seemingly lifeless desert. In the background, rock pillars stand like ancient ruins rising from the desert floor. Beyond the wadi and its geological splendors lie unspoilt natural phenomena. A variety of landscapes in the endless sands, from long sinuous dunes to rugged cliffs to gem-like oases. This land holds the vast wealth of past inhabitants, a wealth extending back before the birth of civilization. Our story takes us to a distant past when the Sahara Desert was partially covered by an ancient sea and inhabited by prehistoric beasts that ruled the earth, like the creature once called the King Lizard, later known to science as the prehistoric carnivorous whale, Basilosaurus Isis. Today, Wadi El Itan, or Valley of the Whales, lies to the west of the eternal Nile River, 170 kilometers southwest of Cairo, bordering the oasis of Fayoum. Wadi El Hitan is located inside Wadi El Rayan protected area, gateway to the western desert of Egypt. Human habitation in this part of Egypt dates back 900,000 years. Great civilizations, have left a unique wealth of monuments bearing witness to a glorious past. Archaeological sites of global importance abound and even today new discoveries are being made. Today the area supports communities of Fellaheen who farm nearby land and fish in the two lakes. This intriguing desert and oasis region is also home to internationally designated important bird areas and to secretive wildlife. Like the fennec fox, the world's smallest fox species. The valley was once the site of an ancient sea which extended far south of today's Mediterranean. Scientists believe that Wadi El Hitan was a protected bay or inland sea rather than an open ocean. The sea retreated and advanced over the millennia between about 250 and 35 million years ago. The valley's history is revealed in the contrasting bands of sandstone, limestone and shale formations that indicate changing environments and climatic periods. A geological survey of Egypt visited the valley in 1902 to 1903 and recorded the existence of fossilized remains. But it wasn't until 1983 that the University of Michigan turned its attention to the unexplored potential of the valley. In 1989, the team of Michigan paleontologist Dr. Philip Gingrich discovered an early whale displaying the remains of hind limbs and feet. This discovery triggered intense interest in the valley and especially in the evolution of whales. Wadi El Hitan is unique for the number and concentration of its fossils which have helped answer important questions about the evolution of life on Earth. A total of 379 whale fossils have been found, comprising three different species dating back 40 million years. These are the best fossilized remains of whales found anywhere in the world. They range from young to old, and many have been found in death positions. And even today, new discoveries are being made. This is backbone and the skull is shifted off on the side. The teeth here are perfect still.
These remains capture the evolutionary changes that were taking place in the whales at that time. They evolved from being land-based animals to being the ocean-going mammals that we know today. The fossils are a major clue to our understanding of this transition and to the environmental changes that compelled it. <laughs> oh, these teeth are just beautiful. They have three big incisors. We only have two. And then they have a big canine tooth like we do, only bigger here. And then they have four teeth behind that that replace baby teeth, and then they have three permanent molars, as we call them. Now, yeah. this is just... The earlier whales lived in shallow coastal waters, but gradually adapted themselves to the deeper waters of the ocean. These whales are the ancestors of the modern whale. This large whale had a serpentine form and was carnivorous. The largest was 18 meters long, had well-developed five-fingered flippers on the forelimbs, hind legs, feet and toes. These features were previously unknown in any whale of the Eocene period. A second species, known as Dorodon, also had the vestigial hind limb bones, but was smaller with a more compact dolphin-like body. It was the prey of larger, more predatory whales, like the Basilosaurus isis. Scientists believe that the abundance of fossilized life at Wadi El Hetan suggests that this was a stable environment, perhaps for hundreds of thousands of years. During this time, there was a slow accumulation of whales that probably died naturally of old age, disease, stranding by tides, or predation by other whales. Prevailing winds may have concentrated carcasses of dead whales by blowing them toward the shallow mangrove-lined bays. Following this stable period, when the rocks and fossils of Wadi El-Hetan were formed, the most recent of our planet's great extinctions occurred at the very end of the Eocene Epoch, about 37 million years ago. At that time, Temperatures in the oceans and on the continents declined. Life cycles and food chains in the oceans were reorganized. Scientists believe the Basilosaurus became extinct, while Dorodon may have given rise to the modern whales that have thrived since the cooling period. The whales of Wadi El-Hetan shared their environment with the ancestors of about 19 other vertebrate species that have been found here, such as crocodiles, dugongs, sharks, rays, bony fishes, and sea turtles. Fossils of dozens of species have been identified so far, including mangrove trees a large variety of invertebrate fauna, such as mollusks and crabs. Wadi El Hetan was added to the Wadi Rayan protected area in 1997. In recognition of its global importance, the site was declared a World Heritage Site in 2005 by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. With the support of Wadi Arayan's twin park, Gran Sasso National Park in Italy, and the government of Italy, visitors can now see and learn about this global treasure. The construction of visitor facilities proceeded with extreme caution. Donkeys were used for the transportation of materials. Mud brick and plaster, which is deeply rooted in the region's culture, was the material of choice. The architecture aimed to harness the combined creative talents of nature, local communities and artists. 
More visitors to the area will bring much needed ecotourism benefits to the local communities. This too calls for an enhanced level of management to care for and protect the fossils. A dedicated team of rangers and community guards conduct regular patrols, monitor the fossil resources and take care of the facilities and educational services that have been developed to help visitors see the fossils and enjoy their visit to this unique treasure. Modern Egypt has inherited a priceless legacy from the past. Eons older than the Pharaoh and the Great Pyramids. With vigorous conservation efforts, this site will be available for generations to come. And scholars seeking to reconstruct past environments and understand extinct species will continue to provide special insights about life on Earth.